Hello, this is Paul Wilkinson here. I'm a composer, a pianist, a improviser and educator. And this is the first video I've decided to do uh, talking about my second symphony. I wrote my first symphony probably eight or nine years ago. Um, and it took about eight years to write on and off. Here's a little sample of that. So it was a complex process writing that first symphony and I must have restarted it 50 times, <clears throat> rewritten it uh, hundreds of times. Um, in fact, there was one point where I was, um, the, the slow movement was really long and it, it had been bugging me that it was long enough. I sent it to a dear friend of mine, a, a great composer himself, and um, uh, when he sent it back, he just wrote on the top of the start of the second movement that, that this this movement outstays its welcome. <coughs> so you know it's quite a quite um, quite a complex process, as you may know if you're composers yourself watching this writing such a, a big work. So a number of years ago, about three years ago, I started working on my. Um, second symphony now before um i've been writing that on and off because i've been very busy with 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 other things but um um i looked back at it again in december and looked at all the opening and then i decided that um well in the end i suppose to put it bluntly i did a sibelius and uh, i don't think sibelius threw his eighth symphony on the fire i didn't throw mine on the fire i uh, threw it in the bin um i just it just was quite a pointless work in the end. I didn't feel it was going anywhere or, or had any direction at all. As, as you well know, if you're creative, you know, you think something's great and then it's rubbish and it's great. And, well, ultimately I ended up back at, uh, it's not, it wasn't a good work. So uh, I began, um, so I, 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 I forgot all about that. And then just after Christmas, um, I had an intense period of about two weeks where I wrote quite a, a substantial start to the second symphony. And at the moment, I feel quite pleased about that. So the idea of this blog really is almost as an encouragement, really, uh, for me to see these videos and go, right, come on, you need to keep going. You can keep writing this. You can you can ultimately finish this. So that's the idea of that. It's kind of an encouragement. And also, um, it would be lovely to hear from everybody else and any support would be gratefully received in, in this case. Um, so that's one of the main reasons. I mean, I, I in, in many respects, I am an old-fashioned composer. Uh, when I say that I mean uh, I write within a tonal sound world which which I believe is my own uh, you know which is uh, my own sound it's taken me a long time to find that sound it's grateful it's greatly influenced by my love of being a, a musician who plays a lot of jazz um, and so it's taken some time to find this sound world you know I've written three three piano sonatas and you know the third piano sonata is much lighter and less dense uh, and chaotic as the first one so i think i've kind of found the sound world i like now so in a way i'm very much uh, an old-fashioned composer so the idea of the thumbnail that you can see there says the bbc problems so so if the bbc problems are watching this and you'd like to commission me to finish this symphony uh for a proms performance that would be that would be absolutely wonderful and i'd love that opportunity uh, because um, it's very difficult in the world of classical music now for, for younger people because uh, the music that is often heard is quite contemporary and modern and maybe that's not a way in uh, for a lot of younger musicians uh, sorry young, younger people listening to music um, and so their access into that kind of music may come from the film music but film music often really supports the narrative of a story so they are sort of in, intrinsically linked together and um, so uh, I write music tonally you know I, I write tonal music um, I write tunes uh, there's something about us as human beings on this spinning ball uh, in space who love melodies and always have loved melodies when you look up and down the land and see what's being commissioned and 
uh, being performed in concert halls, it's often the great works of art from the past that are atonal. You know, I'm a big fan of the uh, of uh, of all kinds of music. I I love the all the things that have been atonal and Ligeti and, and all that kind of thing and Elliot Carter. But ultimately, my sound world is in um, is in the realms of tonality um, and writing melodically. Um, so maybe enough said about that, really. Um, so as I was just going to say that young people will find it difficult because some of the new music they commissioned is very atonal or very abstract and maybe lacking in melodic material within the classical world. And so that's hard for them to sort of relate to that in a way so they can get that from film music, as I've just said. Um, but there are great composers out there who write tonal music. And of course, the British composers in, you know, in, in the 20th century, uh, some people like Finzi and Walton and George Dyson, and, you know, all these great composers, Delius, Elgar, uh, Britain, you know, all, all had a, a way of expressing their self deeply and profundity within a, a sense of a tonal centre. So that's what this video is about. So the next vlog will be an update about how it's going uh, and uh, where I'm at. So I'm just going to leave you with a little bit of it now so you can see a little bit of how far I've worked. This will be a great encouragement to spur me on to do some more as well. So, so here you can see, um, in many respects, as I always say to my students, I'm quite old fashioned the way I score. I like to write everything by hand first. So these are the initial sketches uh, for the uh, Second statement, as you can see, it doesn't really make much sense at all. You just find little notes like second subject. I think it's worth saying that people might say, well, are you an old fashioned composer for writing something called a symphony? And quite possibly, I could be. Uh, but I do feel there is some um, hope in the structure and the formation of a symphony. Uh, I also have a name for this symphony in mind, which I may may well call this, but it will still have the sort of title or subtitle is my symphony number no. two but i do believe there is still a it is still very valid to write music um tagging it with the name symphony it's a great structure i believe uh so there there are my notes there and then i start to sort of fully score it up so so there you go and then i'll just show you a little bit now of it um scored on a, a scoring program <laughs> 